What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Pretty, pretty much a great, solid performance by, by the TakeOver team last week, man. Congratulations. You know what? The best thing about the, the whole shit was now they can't come and they can't say, okay, uh, because of Jorge Rubio or because of Camachi or whatever the fuck it is, man. It, you know, it was only me and my son. We had uh, uh, great people helping us with his health, his condition. Um, I had my man, um, Laron, which is my son-in-law, um, you know, get him ready physically. You know what I'm saying? I, I told him, like, two weeks two weeks into the fight, I told him, listen, man, I want you to, like, break him down. Like, I want you to, like, work on his legs. I want him, like, lifting, like, you know, 350 pounds on his legs. Everything was like, let's just leg workouts because I knew this guy was going to be dirty. I knew this guy was going to come and just jump on top of him. And, you know, exactly what we what, what we anticipated right before the fight, I told my son, listen, man, this guy's going to come hard the first two rounds, three rounds. You just got to weather the storm. And once you bully the bully, you know, and, uh, everything is just going to fall into place. And that's exactly what we did, man. I brought I brought back the old, the old uh, Teofimo Lopez, uh, Gordo, slick boxer Gordo from back in the days. You know when in the, when we used to be in the amateurs when he won twenty nine straight fights in, in two thousand and fifteen or sixteen it was, um, and you know um, losing like three years in a row national. So he wasn't able to go to the uh, to to you know, to fight in the USA team until he made it the last year. Uh, that last year he took it all, bro. Twenty nine straight fights coming out of the freaking Golden Glove Nationals, winning it at seventeen years old. You know uh, that tournament is from seventeen to thirty five years old. So he beat all the men in the United States, bro. People don't know that. And right after winning the Golden Glove Nationals, he goes into uh, the Olympic qualifiers, which was the first tournament two weeks after that. Um, you know, and, and there was like about 450 uh, fighters that uh, in that tournament and um, him beating everybody and in, in the way that he did it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he fought Hinato Gomez in the finals. This guy was, like, knocking everybody out. And my son goes, like, watch what I'm going to do to this guy. Bro, he put up a boxing exhibition in that fight. The judges went crazy. They were jumping up and down. They were like, this kid is the next golden boy. You know, like, they knew that he was going to be the next big thing in boxing. And there was a lot of people in that competition. Uh, Shakur Stevenson was in it. Um, you had uh, uh, the, the Russell brothers were in it. Uh, Gary Russell, uh, Antoine Russell was in it. Um, Dennis. You know, a lot of big, big, uh, big stars, a lot of big, big fighters. You know, uh, Hinato Gomez was the the one, uh, you know, the, he was the most favorite one. He was like to be the next Canelo. And uh, we fought him in the finals and, bro, we just put a, bro, that guy couldn't even touch him, you know, because, I, I call him a T-Rex, you know what I'm saying? He's just like Tank, you know. Tank is like a little T-Rex, you know, the little freaking short arms. So he couldn't hit he couldn't hit my son. He couldn't take him out of there, you know. Um, because my son was just boxing the shit out of him, you know, just slipping, moving, punching him every time he will commit, my son will rock him, you know, he almost knock him out, you know. So uh, after that, we we went straight into the Olympic trials. When you know that's the biggest thing that you can win in 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 in, uh, in the amateurs, you know that's that's when you uh, become the Olympian to go fight in the Continentals, and you know once you win in the Continentals, you fight for the you know the Olympic team. We did all of that, bro. We did all of that. Um, uh, we fought uh, Montgomery, Malik Montgomery. We sent everybody to the losing bracket because that's the only tournament that you could lose and come back. So uh, my son beat everybody uh, that night, I mean that week, and we sent everybody to the losing bracket. 
And Malik Montgomery won in the losing bracket, came back, and we beat him again. And, you know, even Andre Ward was the one that, um, you know, announced the winner and was over there, you know, uh, uh, talking to my son. And, and my son was pissed off because my son said, you know, um, I want everything in the United States. And, and, and they come and they take it away from me, you know, because they had given the position to somebody else that had done nothing, which was uh, Carlos Balderas a guy that nobody knows about anymore, a guy that, that you know, that, that went and, and fought in the Olympics for the, for, for the United States and uh, got knocked out twice in, in the pros, you know, uh, and nobody even knows about him anymore. So, you know, it's not like my son, it's not like my son just came out of nowhere and started doing all this stuff. You know, he was already big in the amateurs. The thing is that nobody knew who he was. Yeah, he was like, uh, when we went into top rank, you know, when top rank signed them, it was because of Miguel Diaz and Frank Steyer, which I, I owe them everything because they saw the fight, you know, they saw the fight and, um, they, you know, they were changing the channels and all of a sudden they saw my son fighting the, the, the French dude. And Miguel Diaz was so upset with the decision that he freaking threw the freaking, um, the remote control, bro. He said, like, they robbed this poor dude, you know, this and that. And Miguel Diaz was the one that told um, Top Rank, you know, yo, listen, forget about Carlos Valderas. You need to sign this kid. This kid's the shit. This, shit, this, kid, is the, this kid is special. And that's how we got signed to Top Rank. You know, I mean, I could write a fucking book out of all this shit, bro. Like, for real, you know. And, you know, you see where he's at right now. I told everybody what we was going to do that night. I told it, yo, listen, I wasn't even supposed to say nothing, you know, because we wanted to we wanted to make it a surprise. But, you know, on the, the day before, I was really pissed off. And I told everybody, you're going to see Slick Boxer Gordo come tomorrow night. This guy's not going to be able to grab him. He's not going to be able to touch him. We're going to just uh, box the shit out of him. And that's what we did. You know, it was all, it was all, um, it was like, like we like like we practiced it, we did it in sparring. We, I mean, like I was so sure we was gonna win. You know, I didn't know what I didn't know what Josh Taylor was gonna come in there because Josh Taylor is a monster, you know. But um, I know my son. I know what he could do. Um, you know, he did great sparring with Sean Porter at seventeen, um, Ugas at nineteen, twenty. You know, uh, we got the best of them. And I was saying to myself, what the fuck is going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? And I figured it out, you know, like right after that Combosis fight, you know, my son almost died because he had a condition. Um, you know, after that fight, it took him a while to get back. Um, and we were just fighting the wrong fucking fight. You know, we were just we were just trying to jab every two seconds, every three seconds, and that was taking him out of his game plan. My son is the best when he could read you and he could see all your movements and figure you out and kind of punch you. That's what he does the best. So I say, yo, listen, let's go back to what we used to do the best. And um, and nobody expected that, bro. Nobody in the world. Everybody put us in there to die. Everybody thought that we was going to be done with, over with. And, you know, to protect all these guys, you know, like the Shakur Stevenson, the, the Tanks, the Devin Haney's. You know, because my son was a menace to them. And now the whole world knows who's the king of boxing. And it's Teofimo Lopez. You know, to me, he's undisputed back to back. And um, and and let's see what happens. You know, um, right now he wants to take his time off. Um, you know, I give him all the credit for it. He needs it. You know, he's going through a lot of things right now that I cannot mention. But, you know, if he's going to be back in the future, I believe so. But as of right now, you know, they're not giving him the what he deserves. They're not paying him what he deserves. And he's going in there and and, and just outclassing all these fighters. So he was in the post press conference. I mean, he was in the press conference today in New York. Um, he mentioned a couple of fighters. A lot of people are asking tons of questions because you guys are on top of the world right now. You guys are number one of the 140 division. Uh, you guys are definitely a crowd-pleasing um, team. 
he was mentioned that, you know, Ryan Garcia was in his DMs saying he would want to make a fight with him. Uh, he kind of ignored it. Is that something as a team that you guys would entertain? Listen, I mean, I, we, we're the only ones. I mean, there, there's nobody on the planet doing what my son is doing. I mean, there's just the way that he boxes, the, his style, uh, clean shots. I mean, uh, making it look easy with with uh, top competition. Um, and we're not going to stop, bro. He's going to keep on doing what he's doing. He, he's a sharp shooter. Um, and he's believing in himself every time. Every time that he fights, he believes in himself more and more, you know. Um, he's his worst critic, like he said, you know, like when he said, oh, do I still got it? Well, that night, he proved to the whole world that he does have it. And um, not only that, we beat a great champion. I don't take nothing away from Josh Taylor. He would have beat anybody that night except for Teofimo Lopez. They were asked about his retirement, and they said that he said that you don't believe it. Why don't you believe that he's retired? I mean, my son is only 25 years old, bro. What he has accomplished in only 20 fucking fights, nobody has ever done that in the planet. You know, um... And right now, I'm not going to push him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. He's his old man. And I'm, I, listen, I'm 100% with him or whatever what his decisions are. But you know what? Um, they got to pay him, bro. It's, it's a, it, you know, we was doing it for the belts. We was doing it for everything. We was taking all the big challenges like none of these guys are doing, you know, Um how the hell are you going to put my son number 10 in the pound for pound list and put Tank in there uh, above my son when Tank hasn't beaten nobody but Pedraza, you know, which is disgusting. It's, it's fucking unbelievable, you know. Um, none of these guys has done what my son has done. And for them to put him at the number 10 in the, time, in the pound for pound list is just disgusting. Those are the issues. Those are the things why my son doesn't want to fight no more. You know, because they don't give him the credit that he deserves, you know. Um, he should at least be between the top three, uh, between the top three, four, or five, pound for pound, you know, easily. You know, um, you know, I, I don't care what anybody says. My son is undisputed at 140. He beat the man that was the man that didn't lose none of his belts, you know. Um and, and and then they come and they disgrace him again, you know, like those fucking those scorecards were horrible, bro. Horrible, you know. And um just to let you know how close we were to get robbed that night, you know. Um if my son would have done the 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 what he did that night, bro, we would have never won. I mean, 15-13, 15-13, bro, those judges were fucking, I don't know what they were fucking watching, bro, but they wasn't watching that fight, bro, because after, that, like, the third or the fourth round, my son just took over. It wasn't even fucking close. What was, you know? what was going through your mind? What was being said in the corner um, due to the fact that you guys knew that this could have been a possibility due to what boxing has turned into? Nah, man, there was no way for them to rob that. No way. He had the cleanest shots. He was just playing with Josh Taylor. Um, you know, we made him look like it was nothing. You know, that's how special my son is, you know. And, and we show the whole world that when he boxes, nobody could beat him, you know. And, um, you know, uh, and we did it in a special way. We didn't do it running. We, we was there in the pocket. We were just catching and shooting. And um, the whole night, um, and you heard he Taylor. had fun in you heard, there. He you was happy in there, you know. You heard Taylor. There was a lot of dirty tactics. From, there was a lot of dirty tactics from uh, Josh Taylor, but we expected that. We was ready for that, you know. That's why I got his legs strong, because I knew that he was going to hang on top of him, you know, um, uh, you know, do all his dirty tactics that he does. We was prepared for that because we knew that the judges, I mean, we knew that the referee wasn't going to do shit. There was numerous of times that he should have got a, a point deducted for, for for him being dirty, you know, especially when my son went through the ropes and, and, and he comes and he hits him, you know. 
um, numerous times when my son was like an entanglement. He would come and just when they when when they would say break, he would just keep on throwing punches. So, you know, uh, Josh Taylor did everything possible in the world to win that fight, but he couldn't do it, bro. He couldn't do it. Uh, my son was too fast, too smart, you know. And and this is gonna happen all the time when he fights because now he gets to fight the bigger guys. 